This is Roppongi Rocks and we are backstage in Tokyo with Ian Haugland from Europe. Hey, how are you? <laughs> I'm fine, thank you. Welcome back to Japan. Thank you, thank you. It's, well, this summer will be 40 years since you joined the band. Oh dear, yeah, that's, that's true. In, in uh, August of um, 84, that's right. And what do you feel like has been the biggest achievement for you during those years? Well, I'm here. That's a big achievement. <laughs> I think, I don't know, it's, uh, you know, just conquering the world and putting Sweden on the, on the, on the hard rock map. Uh, I think Europe has done a lot uh, for, for the Swedish, opening the doors to the world for Swedish, other Swedish bands. It sounds a little bit cocky to say, but I think, it's, I think that's a fact, actually. Uh, as much as um, like Scorpions opened the doors to, to Europe um, for America because uh, with their Love at First Sting album it, it opened up, uh, you know, made the American uh, record companies realize that there were good bands in, in Europe as well. So in that same sense, that's uh, how I... But I mean, yeah, we've done so many great things and uh, but I think uh, just being able to... to, to well, conquer the world in uh, the way that we have and that we can still be doing it is the, that that's the biggest uh, achievement, I think. Indeed. And before Europe, you were playing actually back in some local bands in the, from the late 70s as a teenager. And Leif Edling of Candlemas, who toured Japan last week. Oh, yeah, Leif one. Yes, <laughs> he was one of your bandmates early on. That's and right. then in mid 90s, you did some session work with Candlemas that ended up, I think it was two songs that ended up on a Candlemas album. Yeah, uh, that's right, that's right. So there's a lot of connections there. And yeah. Is there any hope for us Candlemas fans that you will do something more with Leif at some stage? I would love to. I, I, I think Leif is a genius when, when it comes to, to that genre. You know, he's, uh, I mean, he's probably the most, the purest, um, the closest to the essence of, of, you know, bands like Black Sabbath and, and that genre of the, of the metal scene. So, yeah, absolutely. I, I think he's he's a he's he's a genius in his own right. And uh, yeah, we, I, I actually did a, a, a gig with Candlemas as well because the, the drummer was sick or whatever. So it was just a club gig, and we had maybe you know one afternoon to for me to learn all the songs. And and I remember it was I had a hard time playing it so slow because <laughs> it was like. Yeah, slow down. It's too fast. <laughs> but it was it was great fun, and I remember the, the we we played at this club, and it, it, the people went totally fucking berserk. You know, uh, they they love the music, and it's uh, yeah, it's 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 a great band. Yeah, I, hopefully I will uh, get the chance to do something more. With it. Sounds promising. Yeah. And speaking of playing with other musicians I mean with your several of your fellow members of Europe you played with them even during the 90s when Europe was on a sort mm. of on a break for a number of years you were still playing together in a few bands and projects and things and is the bond that strong between you as friends and musicians yeah and I realize that more and more the, the, the more time that passes uh, I, I'm thinking every uh, every night when we're on stage you know Fucking hell, John Levin, what a solid bass player he is. And we, we, um, uh, we um, connect in a way, I think, you know, we, we, we work, sometimes he, you know, pushes the, the, the tempo and I lean back and the other way around in, in other songs. So it's, it, it creates that great tension between the, you know, in, in, in the rhythm section and, uh, yeah, we, we, we know each other inside out when it comes to the, the playing. It just it just happens uh, automatically. So uh, it's definitely a, a special bonding there. And also Mick, he's he's just uh, he's the greatest you know um, painter of music. You know to create the the moods and the to find the really expensive chords, <laughs> as I used to call them. Um, he's a master of of, of uh, building the, the chord structure and the, uh, the or orchestration of, of, of um, the songs. So we have, um, yeah, he's a, he's a wizard in his, in his own right. Indeed. Yeah. 
and now you're on a tour, the time capsule tour as you call it. You played Europe for the, over the last few months, now you're here in Japan, and this is sort of a 40th anniversary type of, you know, paying respect to the catalog with a mm -hmm. lot of hits, but also some deep cuts, I understand. Yeah. So what kind of, out of all the deep cuts, what's your favorite one to perform live? Oh, right now I think, uh, uh, well, I always love um, uh, War of Kings because I can go fucking crazy at the end of the song, you know, almost like a drum solo within the song, which is great fun. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and uh, also, uh, I mean, Walk the Earth and, and uh, Last, Look, Last Look at Eden is, is, a, is a great song, I think. But um, yeah, it's, it's a great mixture of, of uh, both the, the hits and the, the deep cuts. So it's, uh, it's really good. Right. And what about any deep cut or any song out of Europe's vast catalogue that you haven't played, that you would like to play? Uh, oh, that's a tricky one, but it would probably be something from, from uh, uh, Bag of Bones. May maybe the song Bag of, Bone, Bag of Bones or... Uh, oh, it's, it, it's a fucking great album. I just listened back to it the other day and uh, I was stunned. It was like, is that... Me playing drums like that, I couldn't even remember, you know, uh, playing it. Uh, but it, it was a great session with, with Kevin Shirley, the producer. Uh, so probably, yeah, I would say Bag of Bones, just uh, to pick one song from that album. Uh, so, but there's a lot of songs. I mean, I, I love the songs from the from the first album, like uh, The King Will Return and uh, uh, Paradise Bay, I think is great, it's a, it has a great, groove to it so yeah. there, there's a lot of you know in general uh, listening back to the to the back catalog of, of, of the band it, it's it's stunning how many great timeless uh, rock classics uh, there are you know yeah very true and what motivates you to keep going now? You've been playing for 45 odd years at a pretty high level. You're turning yeah. 60 this summer. Do you yeah. have, still have motivation to keep doing this? Yeah, just to, 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 to keep the, uh, the, <laughs> the body from, uh, you know, entering the stage of uh, death, <laughs> probably. No, but I mean, what, what I can, I, I mean, I, I'm, I'm really, uh, in my mind, I'm still 25, you know, when I'm playing, you know, with, but I can, I can tell, you know, I, I get a lot of, you know, strains in my shoulders and in my elbows, and uh, it does get more of a strain to, to play the shows, but it's still okay. And I also know that after maybe five or six concerts, <clears throat> it, it all starts going away like a, I guess like a like a football player or a hockey player that has uh, you know been away for a while so it's it's all about getting into it so you know the worst thing you can do is stop doing it because then it's you know <laughs> the fall is gonna gonna enter so it's it's uh, and also I mean it's uh, and that has always been the greatest motivation is fun it's fun it's uh, it's when I play, uh, when I play drums, that's where I connect with myself. Because um, if I haven't played drums in a long while and I'm just, you know, walking astray in the in the in the real world, I just feel like an alien. But as soon as I get, go behind the drum kit and I sit and I play for a couple of hours, you know, answers comes to me from somewhere, and it's like, all right, okay, I understand. So it's uh, it's it's not what I do it's what I am you know there you go okay. and your last studio album came out in 2017 yeah can we expect something new this year or is it too early uh we we got a pretty uh busy schedule at least for the first half of this year um doing the the festival uh circuit up to August and then after that I'm not sure if there's anything booked but others then I, we're, we're working on new material and uh, the plan is to to go into the studio and start recording uh, and have a new album well i guess it would be early next year um, and it's promising uh, i i know joey has been raving about uh, two of the songs that, uh, that him and mick is uh, planning on riding on and uh, him and john levin uh, has something 
cooking. So it's, uh, you know, the, the, the chemistry is still there. It's still going and it's, uh, it's great fun. I can't wait to get back into the studio because in the studio, that's where you, when you reconnect as, um, you know, band members, that's where you create the soul of the band, you know, to, to go out on stage and to play the songs, that's just fun. That's just like, you know, you've done the, the groundwork, you just go out there and you play and you have a good time. But in the studio, that's where you have the, the, the possibility to to grow as a band and to develop as a band and as a musician. So um, we haven't done that in, in a long while now, so we're, it's about time to, yeah. Excellent, well, yeah. thank you very much. Cheers.